deputy that responded um, um, did his due diligence. Just days after the Lewiston shooting, Saginaw County Sheriff Joel Mary defended his deputies' actions in the weeks and months before, despite the fact they never made direct contact with the gunman. Tonight, we're getting a first look at body cam and dash cam video that sheds a light on just what went wrong. Hey, everybody, thanks for being with us. We want to warn you, some of what you're about to watch could be hard to hear. He did say, you know, that he would shoot places, but never specifically mentioned here. New video details concerns police and members of the Army had about Robert Card weeks before he carried out the deadliest shooting in Maine's history. It started with a phone call from Brunswick police officer and Card's former boss in the National Guard, Lieutenant Ed Urich. Robert Card suffering from psychotic episodes. Responding to a statewide police alert looking for Card, who was known to be armed and dangerous. Reports say Card threatened to shoot up the armory in Saco. On September 16th, Saco police officers went to the armory expecting Card to show up for drill. How are you doing, sir, Major? When he didn't, officers went in and spoke to the commander of Card's unit, Captain Jeremy Reamer. He said he spoke to Card, but downplayed the concerns. He does have mental health issues. Um, you know, I'd say probably schizophrenia is to be what is he's delusional. Here. Later that day, Reamer spoke to deputies in Sagadahawk County. From his cruiser, Sergeant Aaron Schofield told Reamer deputies were trying to make contact with Card at his home in Bowdoin. He's alive, he won't answer the door, and there's no good way to approach the trailer without being in a line of sight through the curtains. Schofield even directly asked about Card's guns. All of his weapons from the National Guard have been accounted for, right? So he doesn't have anything at the house? As far as I know. Okay. Um, there was no real court order to take his weapons or anything like that. But the sergeant said they needed to take Maine's yellow flag law into account. There's a process that we're supposed to go through to uh, seize their weapons if they are deemed a danger to themselves or others. Yeah, he's refusing any real medical treatment. I mean, we got him as much as we could, mm -hmm. but, you know, he can lead a horse to water, but if he's not going to drink it, then there's not much we can really do. Just an hour later, Schofield went to Card's father's house to try to find his brother Ryan, who had been in touch with deputies about taking his weapons from him. I want to make sure he got Robert's gun. Card's father said he didn't know where the guns were. Sure, Robert didn't know how to do anything for it. Now, just over five weeks later, Card claimed the lives of 18 innocent people and injured 13 others at Just In Time Bowling Alley and Schmenji's Bar and Grill in Lewiston. The oldest victim was 76, the youngest just 14 years old. An independent investigation that looked at much of these recordings claimed deputies acted reasonably in Sagadahawk County. And after calls from Maine's top lawmakers, the Army has now launched an investigation of its own.